Hello, how are you? Is, is Ralph joining us as well? Well, you're not. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I look like a mess, but I kind of stumbled out of bat and I didn't want to miss the opportunity to meet my uh, my great hero. You have a very rakish uh, background. <laughs> it's, uh, some bespoke shoes which are not, not being used at all. <laughs> ah, seriously? <laughs> but it looks nice. There's nowhere to go right now. We're, we have a lockdown <laughs> until the uh, 1st of June, so. Yeah, I heard. Uh, I, I spoke to some uh, some people from uh, Singapore who were were uh, a bit confused about the way how it's going in your country because, uh, like, it seems that in the beginning, uh, like the, the 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 hospitality services, like restaurants, were still open or something. Yeah, yeah. Now now everything's shut. Um, they had an issue where basically the they had. Well, I think they they have a potential PR issue on their hand. Also, they were very good at containing it with the general population, but they uh, forgot about the 750,000 foreign workers that are working here, and who okay. live in very close proximity to each other. So they've had a huge up spike specific to the the foreign workers and the dormitories that they have. So that's something they need to resolve, you know. But yeah, well, that's it's a very dense city, also probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also, now you're not uh, in right now. Totally. Want to, want to get this uh, story and then this this zoom out before um, I think I think Ming is launching his watch on the first of May, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'd like to get this out maybe the day before. I think would be really good. So wow. like on the yeah. and then uh, then we'll have the story and then we'll have the um, the, the video as well, which can be embedded in the story. Um, yeah. I, 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 like on as a watch lover, I think it's um, like quite shameful actually what he did because it's clearly um almost a you know complete facsimile of your watch certainly you know the the thing that it's a signature of your watches is is the integration of the lugs in the case right i mean that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's and that's something that is very very recognizable and uh and i think that what he did especially when you see it from the back of the watch as well right like, yeah yeah the back the back letters and the text yeah the buckle as well well, uh, the the front is still very very Mingish, and I, I really like the brand also. And I knew uh, I knew Magnus Bosse, uh, yeah. so I've met him, and I wouldn't have expected that. So yeah. at least at least they would have seen it. He took like images like two years ago of my watches, and I think that at least they would have have had this connection right in their mind, so they could have have contact uh, contact me or something. I don't know. <laughs> Exactly. It's funny. I was just uh, was I was supposed to do a Zoom today with Richard Mill, um, but then he forgot that his his computer is so old it doesn't have a camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and it's a, and it's a, it's a, Richard yeah. Mill is like the most modern watchmaker out there. <laughs> well, yeah, I have to be honest that I'm working on a very old computer right now. So may, if I'm going to share, you will see that I'm still using uh, Windows Seven. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, and it was funny because I remember when you know after he launched his brand, I think it then went and became really popular. There was like a whole bunch of people who basically created like Richard Mill watches. You know, I think the yeah. most the most obvious one at the time was Kustos, which is a uh, you know created by the, the son of uh, of Bartan Simakis, who's the partner of Frank Mueller. So Kustos, ah, okay. uh, who's a very nice guy, Sasun Simakis. But if you looked at it, it was an exact copy of Richard Mill watch. Wow. Just not good, right? right? And and I remember when I spoke to him about this, I was like, "Hey, uh, how do you, how does that make you feel?" And he said, uh, "You know, it's I just find the lack of imagination in the world a bit sad, right?" Um, and then I I remember when I was I went to the Park Hyatt once. This is I think a couple of years after I launched the Wraith, and I was like next to my like bed on the on the stand was a magazine called Dandy. And Dandy magazine, like I had seen it before and it was like kind of a bit of an old fashioned magazine for guys that like to wear bow ties and this kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, and then they had completely like emulated the entire format of the rake. Like, so they had done the, the cover stock, wow. they'd done the font, they'd done even the, the like openers of each section. And then even, even our layouts, they completely copied. I don't know if it's still exactly like that, but it was, you know, at least for a year, it was exactly like that. And, you know, like I got to... <laughs> On the other side, it, t it tells you that that you're on the right track, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I, you know, honestly, I think that 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 even at, me, at this point, from a financial perspective, there's no way he can stop the launch of his watches because I'm sure he's like invested yeah. in you know the movements and the cases and so on like that. But I think that what will might be interesting is that might might actually kind of draw more attention to you. Um, yeah. Right. So, and like I said, like I have no issue with Ming. Like I think his um, dial is his his watches are quite cool. I mean, I like his dial yeah. is cool. 
because it's like he's basically gone and take his like a 1940s like sector dial paddock and he's made it like very modern looking right and, yeah yeah um, totally and, agree and the fact that they loomed it and so on like that or loomed that it was cool but then this was quite disappointing and especially from the back view it looks you know totally like your watch but you know people i have a tendency like i think like if robert young is is kind of behind it and wants to get the story across and um Frank uh, from Monochrome really kind of wants to get the story across. I think in the end, we'll probably just end up benefiting you uh, more. Yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, uh, whatever, you know. <laughs> uh, I, 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 and, and also, it, you know, you, ha you have a great design. Okay, so let me get started on the interview, if you don't mind. Um, so, I'm sorry, uh, how, is it Mikiel? Uh, you, can, you can just uh, simply call me Michael. Michael. And then, yeah. and, and how do I pronounce your last name? Whole, yeah, that's, whole that's, that's super difficult. I, I thought a lot about it before I thought uh, of naming my brand after it, but it's Holt Hinrichs. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's especially if you're English and, uh, or English yeah. speaking, then it's very difficult. Okay. Um, uh, it's okay. The idea, however, uh, is- uh, It's not like a very easy name to pronounce. And, or, or Reshop Reshepi, you know? And in the yeah. end, <laughs> yeah. like, like, it doesn't matter, right? Sometimes it's better than it's hard to pronounce. It makes like independent watch collectors love a challenge, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay, and so the thing is that it, it, it will become more and more for a certain niche. So so therefore it's it's great, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so uh, guys, uh, if you're joining, uh, thank you very much for joining uh, me. Today I'm here with Michael Holfenrich, right? Um, yeah. and, and my buddy Ralph, who's kind of tucked in the corner. Uh, there you go. Otherwise known as uh, 50 Fathoms Mill Spec on Instagram. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about your, your watch brand because um, I kind of came across it almost by accident. I think it was on Instagram or I think it could, might have been um, on, on Ralph's feed. And I have to say, like, it, it had been a while since I had, like, a really strong emotional reaction to something, like, like a powerful sense of attraction to a new design from an unknown watchmaker or uh, unknown to me, of course. Um, uh, and, and, and yeah, it just immediately I looked at it and I just dug it, right? And, and there was, to me, this really cool aesthetic sensibility that I found completely original. And then later, as I read more about you, I learned that you were an architect, that you trained both in Delft and Paris, yeah. um, and that you were, you know, kind of pioneering the use of 3D printing for your cases, it kind of started to make sense. But I think that it, the, the thing is that what I dug so much about the watch, like I, you know, so some men like um, voices, um, Quentin Tarantino clearly has a thing for feet. Um, I like lugs, right? And I like the, the intersection between a lug and a watch. And I particularly like it when there's a dynamic tension between the two, right? So some yeah. of my favorite watches, whether it's the original Corn de Vache, the 6087 from Vachon, or the 1579 Spider Lug um, Paddock Chronograph, they have this beautiful juxtaposition of lugs that seem like they might not work, but somehow they become super sexy when they do. Right. So your lugs like um, like they're so like engaging because there's a skeletonization and there's just power, powerful kind of curvilinear language. They remind me of like the flying buttresses at Chartres, you know, the cathedral yeah. of Chartres. Right. Uh, and then the kind of like really dazzling integration, particularly in the raw format, because then you take advantage of like this sort of rough hewn, almost frosted finish uh, for the case counterpointed by just polishing the edges of the lug. So, so tell me about, okay, who are you and, and what's your design sensibility, you know? Well, thank you very much for introducing uh, and, and the kind words. Um, well, I'm, I'm a trained architect, so I uh, studied in Delft in the Netherlands. And um, it was actually because of the, the boringness of, or, or the role of the architect uh, nowadays that I decided that I wanted to go into watch design. So the, the, the background is that I was uh, uh, actually uh, a, a nice link. I was um, uh, familiar with the, the rake uh, because I had, I was a student, so I lived in a, in a student house and there was a, 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 a like a roommate. He, um, he, he, he showed me the rake and uh, he showed me later on how beautiful clothes are, are, are made. So like beautiful uh, shoes and how good your stitching works, etc. So I became totally fascinated with it. And when you're talking about those details, and it's immediately about, about the, uh, the beauty of craftsmanship, actually, uh, and also the finer details in designs. Um, and uh, uh, I, I I became interested in clothing and then bought my first vintage watch, which was an Omega uh, pocket watch because of, that was the most classical uh, option. And, uh, and I fell in love with the mechanism and with the design. 
So a few years later, uh, after I was quite disappointed in architecture, I started with, uh, with watchmaking and watch design. Uh, I had most of the skills uh, through my studies. Um, so that's very important, but, but I, took, I took the idea of 3D printing and uh, skeletonized uh, uh, shapes and also the curved shapes from, from architecture again. So it's, it's nice that you said uh, the buttress in, uh, in, in Chartres, uh, for example, is that we, I, I really dig gothic, uh, gothical architecture. And, and from gothical architecture, you can see that uh, uh, Viollet le Duc, a uh, uh, famous uh, architect uh, from the 19th century, he actually renovated, for example, the Notre Dame in Paris, uh, and he did a lot of studies into, uh, into metaphor architecture, um, and he transformed it into a modern uh, appearance, and that was actually the beginning of the Art Nouveau. So the beginning of the, of the, 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 the first uh, um, modern architecture. And, and Art Nouveau, of course, has the very curvy shapes. Uh, and then you have the Art Deco period, which is about balances and proportions, etc. And those two uh, periods are, for me, the most fascinating uh, periods because you have the modernist uh, atmosphere, you have a very uh, progressive style, but at the same time, it's about the details and about the, uh, the beauty of the, of the design and the expressive, uh, expressiveness of design. So for me, that, that was the, uh, uh, the inspiration. And you can see uh, that, that, for example, in the Ornament 1, which is my first design, is, is still very classical. Yeah, I'll pull that picture up uh, on the whole screen share function. So Thanks. <laughs> let's see. So let's go to the... Yeah, that, that's the Ornament 1 already. Okay, good. So yes. you, can see, uh, you can see from the front, this is actually quite, quite a, a well-working image because you can see the front, which is very classical. Uh, I, I also wanted to have a, a sub-seconds in there because it's, it's very classical uh, and it helps with the proportions on the dial because it's on the six. Um, and you can see that, that, that it helps with the uh, symmetry on the, on the watch. Um, and uh, this is, by the way, an artist impression. So, uh, but um, uh, uh, on the side, uh, which is, uh, yeah, so on the side you can see the, yeah, you can see it in this image. Uh, it's skeletonized. Yeah, uh, you can see really rough textures, uh, and that's that's one thing which I find also fascinating by the uh, the technology I work with is that you have, um, and of course this is an, uh, uh, an enlarged image, but you have a kind of hammered surface almost. And it depends on, it depends on the, the time frame when you are actually producing it. So uh, the technology is, is uh, e evolving quite rapidly. Um, I can show you later on images of, of like the most uh, up-to-date uh, uh, designs. And you can see that there's, there's a lot of, technical progression over there. And I think that's very interesting to see actually in your watch, as long as the exterior uh, or the overall watch appears like a very beautiful finished piece. Um, so so it, should be, it should be part of the, uh, of the aesthetics of the watch. Um, and that, that you, can, you can, I think uh, uh, this, this is, the, this is the, the classical Art Deco version. And if you go to, uh, if it's possible to the, um, to the raw ornament. Uh, okay, so maybe I'll pause you here for just a second because before we go to the raw. So I, I think already here, you know, and this is, this is um, as you, as if I was learning from your website, the 3D printing, when it's finished with the 3D printing process, you, the, the, the finish that you have is kind of a rough hued, almost sand cast kind of a finish yeah. to it. Yeah. And it reminds me, I think of the, you know, the very first MV Augusta motorcycles, they had these sand cast magnesium parts on it and had this kind of like raw, rough finish on it. And it's something that yeah. I always find very appealing because I, I like motorcycles, for example. I, I like kind of those industrial, you know, but yet kind of artistic. So I love looking at the interior of the watch and seeing that. And even, you know, I love the detail of this lug, for example, because it's skeletonized, but then it has this huge kind of hollow or, or uh, almost like engraved, um, yeah. um, like negative space here and inside of that negative space you have also that that wonderful finish so there's so many interesting things going on with it that these you know there's such such interesting expression to it and i, I love also the symmetry like i love the fact that this like four o'clock index kind of like aligns with that that flare and the lug there you know i mean it's just such a well thought out thing and i and i get what you're saying about your influence from you know uh, art nouveau and art deco because 
even though there's a lot of kind of modernism here, it's a very um, uh, uh, lascivious and joyful and like uh, decorative, uh, um, you know, modernism as opposed to something that's very cool and very minimalistic. You know, there's a lot of like sexiness and life being expressed here, <laughs> uh, which I did. You know, um, okay. So this is this is the uh, this is the silver dial version, right? Yeah. If I'm yeah. Mistaken. So let's go take a look at the, and then there is, uh, we'll go look at the rough. Yeah, you have to, yeah, if you go to the watches, yeah. Let's see. So are, are these all, I know the, the movements are, they're Pezzo uh, 70001 manual wow movements, yeah. which is funny because I remember that movement from the um, original uh, Ulrich watches, they were using those as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but tell me, um, are, so the movements, are they being assembled in Switzerland for you and then, then they're shipped and then you assemble the watch in Delft or, or how does it work? Where, where are the watches being made? Uh, well, I currently I work with a new old stock Peso movement mm -hmm. uh, and they are quite difficult to, uh, to source, but I have found this, uh, this supplier which, uh, uh, which really helps. <laughs> But but yeah, you, you know that it's quite quite hard to get uh, to, to get right suppliers in this market. Yeah. Uh, but but when I started, I, I uh, of course you, it's 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 not possible in the beginning to develop uh, your own movement. Uh, so you have to you have to choose uh, um, uh, if you have the principles for your design set, then you have to choose the the movement which is best fitting to the design or to your uh, concept. So, and uh, I, I really dig like the, 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 the old dress watches from the 1940s and 50s. So you see a lot of Art Deco over there also. Yeah. Um, and that made me choose for the 7001 because it's, it's the thinnest movement which is available on the market actually. Right. So what I do is I, I, uh, I buy the, the movements and uh, I, can, I can assure that they are new or new old stock. Um, uh, you can see it in the, uh, you can, you can see it in the wear, of course, in the movement. And then I take, I take the parts, uh, I, I take them apart. I, um, um, I refinish actually all parts, um, for the, I have to say for the raw ornament and for the ornament one, there's the, uh, the ETA 7001 Elaboré version, mm -hmm. which is going to be upgraded, uh, soon. Um, but the idea is that the whole movement is reworked and it's reworked in my LTA by me. Uh, I have this, uh, this old machine, so you can see a, so a measuring device in the back. Um, so new bridges for the gear uh, train and, uh, uh, and gear bridge. And then so you taught yourself it, it can be engraved. Then. Sorry? So you taught yourself watchmaking then? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> you're, making, you're, making, you're, you're making your own bridges, uh, bridges then as well. Yeah, yeah. So the thing, is, the, yeah, the, the, the thing is that if I'm into something, it's also it, like I, I just told you, I, I got into, into clothing and I, I, I wanted to know how to stitch certain stitches, for example. So I put my jacket on you because I didn't realize. I, I, I just saw your <laughs> amazing lapels and your amazing shoulders, like the rope okay. shoulder over there. So Do you know where the jacket is from? I think I think it could be Tom Ford. It's uh, very close. It's uh, Schifanelli. Ah, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go from here back to the raw ornament because this is this is the watch. Things it's this exact model with the fourteen carat uh, frosted dial um, yeah. and this incredible contrast between. And I just love the contrast between this sort of crazy rough hewn texture and the polished uh, uh, parts on the blend. It's funny because there were a few years. Uh, what year was it? I think it was. I want to say it was 2007, around there, but, but Richard Mill came out with a watch called the RM09, which was at the time the world's lightest watch. Um, okay. And he made this uh, move, oh, sorry, case out of a material called Elusic, which was aluminum and silicon, which had to be like spun in a centrifuge, so it bonded at the molecular level. But it had this amazing look to it because it looked like it was carved out of a rock. Right, and when yeah. I looked at the watch for the, this watch for the first time, it had that same kind of feeling to it. I especially love, like, I guess on the, the left side here, um, yeah. the, just on the left lug. I guess you know, if, if you were someone that was a perfectionist, you would look at this as being kind of like a flaw. Yeah. But to me, that's I find that beautiful because I, th I find that really interesting that you've got these kind of you know, this irregularity and these kind of crazy kind of deformities, but it's so rugged and brutal looking. You know, so so tell me a little bit about this and tell me about why you decided to keep it in the raw form. Yeah, well, that's that's uh, I 
fr from the ornament one where which has the uh polished exterior then i got a lot of uh, uh comments about the 3d printing a lot of people said that it, why would you choose 3d printing uh for for uh, a, a watch when it looks rubbish and you have to uh, finish everything um and for me that's certainly not the point so because i think that the chances the the technology offers for design like the skeletonized design and also the beauty of the uh, of, of the imperfection in that sense um, is uh, quite attractive in my opinion um, and so it's it's a bit architectural uh, approach to it um, and that made me think of um, making the ornament one with a uh, with a rough exterior which is actually basically this this watch so it's it's the ornament one but then with thicker outlines of the lux so i can uh, i can polish it um so so the the outlines were needed because if you want to show the beauty and uh, of the imperfection of, of the technology then you have to balance it with um with very specific details which you um which are finished actually so the, the the polished lines are needed to show that it's very thought of um, and uh, um, and and for example the the left part which you just pointed out which is a bit rougher it's the yeah, uh, yeah so it's it's more to the the the, um, the watch is printed straight up like this uh, you, can, you can see an example over here so the, the beginning uh, yeah yeah I hope I hope this works um, so on the on the underside, you have the supports which are needed uh, during the, the process. Right. Um, you can also see that it's hollow, of course. So it's standing like 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 this. This is an older right. prototype, which was a bit tilted. And actually, the, the, the coarseness on the lower side is the result of uh, the, the spots where the supports have been. Uh, uh, right. So it tells about how the, the watch is made, uh, how it's made. And I, I think... Just like in, uh, I, I call it Horlogerie Bru, uh, which is derived from uh, uh, the famous architect uh, uh, Le Corbusier, who invented Horlogerie Bru, uh, uh, Beton Bru, which is like showing the, the, the concrete, but then it is in its raw, unfinished state to show the intrinsic uh, beauty of the, pro of the material in the process. So that's exactly the idea here, um, is, is to show how it's made. So that people can understand it and and if you don't appreciate it then well you shouldn't buy from me i guess but <laughs> but uh but i i really like the contrast between the hand finished parts and then the rough parts uh it makes it it makes it i well i think richard mule is like you 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 spoke about richard mule is very modernist but i also like to know uh, to 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 um talk about Romain Jerome, which also expand, exp unfortunately they're not there anymore, but um, they also experimented a lot with, with how to do textures inside of a case. And this, this uh, uh, technology always brings in, uh, already brings in a lot of textures, which I think is a shame to, uh, uh, to take off uh, of the uh, finished part. So yeah, um, yeah. This uh, this up here, here right now. This is this is an incredible sort of back view of the uh, of the watch as well. And here you have this. Uh, you, did you say you made these lines thicker on the raw one? Yeah, yeah. And then you have an even greater contrast, right? Yeah, and I, yeah. It, it makes for a slightly more aggressive feeling watch as well. But let's exactly. take a quick yeah. look at this movement as well, because I find this extremely charming. First of all, I love the the forms that you selected for the uh, the bridges. They're, they're very charming. And Thank then you. I'm looking at this because this is a sharp internal angle right here, right? Yeah. Which means this is hand beveled, right? Yeah, yeah, true, yeah. So that's but nice also that you have a demonstration that it's like, yeah, just right, you, you want people to understand that this, there's a lot of hand craftsmanship that goes into this, right? Yeah, 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 that's exactly the point. And that's also the point with the case why this has these, these polished lines is that, of course, they are, uh, they are embossed, so, so it's, it's, for me accessible to finish otherwise i would damage the also the the the, the other uh, surfaces um it creates depth and i wanted to have the same feel in the um in, in the movement and the thing is when you want to only do selective polishing then it it has to be done by hand because you are most flexible by uh, working by hand um and and i wanted to uh, also incorporate that into the movement so you have this frosted surfaces with contrasting uh, baffles. And this movement is uh, the, the, the standard layout for this model. 
Um, but I offer, uh, I, I, I can, I'm very flexible because it's done by hand. You are very flexible as a watchmaker and you can, you can uh, uh, like discuss uh, with, uh, with the client how, how, how far the, far going the, the finishing should be. Wow. Uh, so, cool. so, yeah, well, well, I think, I think actually uh, I, I just saw your uh, movie about uh, the, the beginning of, of, of Revolution magazine um, and, and how e-commerce is, uh, uh, is, is growing and, and that people are getting more, uh, smart, uh, or more into the technology or how things are made. So I, I think it's very important to have a very close relationship with the client. Um, so that so, so that you can make a, a, almost a bespoke watch, right? It's so, Michael, like let me ask you this: so, so how do, how do, so how does it work? Can people do they buy a pre-existing model, or can they say like, hey, I like I want a raw ornament, but I'd like to have like this detail or that te detail change? Because because I know you do bespoke pieces, but like uh, like walk us through the process of ordering one first of all, and then second of all, um, so is, is all the work just done by you, or do you have a team there? Ah, yeah. Um, well, first question is uh, uh, people contact us uh, or, or me through uh, Instagram. Uh, Instagram is a very big sales platform uh, nowadays uh, or through email uh, through the website. Um, I don't have a simply buy it now option because it's um, uh, every watch is made by hand <coughs> and the demand is that high that I can't have this. Um, uh, I can't have stock actually. Right. Um, and that, 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 eventually led also to the point that I said, well, I'm going to make almost only bespoke watches or customized watches because I'm, I'm making them on request. So why, so I can change already things. That's cool. um, so, so yeah, so that's actually the reason. So I, I, I tell people what the options are and within, of course, my design uh, um, philosophy or if, if, for example, if you want to change uh, certain aspects of the dial, it's possible you have to pay more, but, uh, and I will make the design because it's it has to suit within the uh, within the overall design, of course. So give me uh, give me an example of what someone could request. Uh, I have had requests for, uh, for example, Roman numerals or uh, Indian Arabic numerals. That's totally. Um, uh, that of course can be done. Uh, I can change the colors of the of the of the background of the dials or the combination with the dial and the and the case. Can you loom uh, the dial? Sorry. Have you, have you done a luminous dial yet? Not yet, no, but I'm thinking about how to do it. So it's, it's in my mind already. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that would, because we are, we're, actually that, that reason, uh, like we were thinking about loom inside of the, inside of the dial um, just before Baselworld 2019, and um, it was too short of a time to, to get it realized. So that's the reason why we, uh, we applied loom to the, to the hands, because we wanted to, uh, I, well, I wanted to have a modernist feel with this watch, with this model. And I think, I think Loom, although it's, it's really old already, uh, or the concept of Loom, I think that it, it adds a lot of moder uh, modernity to, uh, to the watch. Um, and, and therefore also a very shouty, like contrasting color. Um, but the idea is actually to, uh, to implement also more Loom to the watch to later models. So, so this, this model is what it is, I would say, but, but, but it's, that's also the nice thing about watchmaking or, or design or, or, or architecture is that it's, it's never ending. Uh, so it evolves. <laughs> and and uh, uh, j just to answer your question about the team, uh, right now I, I, um, I make, uh, well, Rolf uh, has joined me recently. Um, and, is he um, doing polishing? Sorry? Is he doing polishing? <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm learning. I, 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 well, we, you did some testing on uh, on Anglage one evening. And it was quite. It was. Well, was it you liked it. Before, it was quite right. the <laughs> I do the. I, I do most of the finishing. Sorry, I'll take my hat off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a trained surgeon by profession, so I I, I should have. Um, ah the, the yes. Skills of, 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 of the like the, the manual finishing, but uh, it's it's a hard process, and I'm I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> That's great. But but what I'm what 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 I've learned throughout the uh, the the last couple of years is that uh, as a, as a designer you're often very shy. So I'm uh, I'm like this hermit in my atelier making my watches, and uh, and I find it very difficult to to uh, uh, to, to uh, well to go into the world uh, to so to say. So Rolf there has has a talent for that. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, so so that helps a lot. And um, I'm doing most of the finishing of uh, of the watches and also the design of the watches. So almost every step. 
uh, and uh, and I'm I'm working with uh, uh, with part time with a part time employee right now, which I'm uh, educating to actually make my watches. So I'm I'm uh, I want to expand the company uh, slowly, um, but I think it will never be like uh, uh, well if if I'm thinking forward. Uh, it should never be become too big because I want to maintain this personal contact with the client. I think that's super important. Well, it's really uh, nice also that in this this day and age where you know things have a tendency to be created in large quantities and for mass audiences, that you can still have um, a watch that where you know the person that's doing the polishing, yeah. that's doing the beveling, that's designing your special dial for you, that you can he can be your friend and you can have a conversation yeah. with him. And it's a journey as well, you know, and I think that one of the things that's going to be very important after we emerge from this kind of post COVID-19 social isolation period is that people are going to want to have those very personal experiences and going to want to have things, yeah. you know, reflections of their unique personality and identity through a wonderful collaboration. So I think you're very well positioned for that, man. Okay. Tell me a little bit. I want, cause I want to go through the model range and the pricing as well. Cause I, I like the value proposition that the watches represent as well, but tell me a little bit about what you, your hopes are for the future. You'd mentioned, um, you might be working on something related in movements yeah. or what would be the next, what would be the next uh, thing for you? Would you want to do a chronograph or, or just kind of a, an interesting complication or. Yeah. Well, um, uh, so like the ornament one is my most classical piece and it will, uh, it will, it will maintain the most classical piece, but uh, uh, it will evolve over time. So I'm uh, now designing a, a movement layout based on the 7,001 for that particular model. It will also mean that the, the, the price which is now uh, 3,008, uh, 3,389 3, excluding back. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, um, that, uh, that, that will rise a little bit, but it will, it will also have more hand finishing. Um, and uh, there, will be, there will be this baseline, which is priced until about 10,000 10, euros. Uh, 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 but, but so that's relatively accessible to the amount of work which goes into it. And next to this, uh, which is Actually, my, my, my dream from the beginning is the, uh, is the ornament two I'm working on, uh, which is uh, uh, this model. You, have, you, you might have seen it uh, uh, already. Um, and this, uh, well, maybe, maybe I, can, I might share uh, the, the a screen if you're okay with it. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. So I'm going to try to, uh, yeah, and then do, Yeah, so um, this is a designer I've, uh, I've been working on for about three years already. Um, and, and the idea is that it has uh, an in-house movement, uh, uh, but great. yeah, but, but, but a very simple movement because I, um, uh, when, when I'm thinking about co um, complications, then a watch becomes very far, uh, very like, it can become more about the movement than the overall design of a watch. And for me, especially the, the overall design or the, the uh, uh, some might call it the whole story design or that all the parts are matching with each other. The, yeah. That's actually, so the aesthetics is, is for me is more important than, than having a lot of complications. So uh, uh, in, in terms of functionality, I think simplicity is, is the way to go for me. Uh, because it, it- Is this the same size? Is it 38 mm? This will be a, a 39.5 millimeters. Um, and uh, if I go, if it works like, uh, I don't know. It, can you see this 3D model right now? Uh, yeah, I've seen the, the, the pencil sketch. Um, ah, okay. I think you need to manually select the image for the share. Ah, new share, okay, and we're going here. So probably you can see it right now. Dude, that's cool. You know, what's funny is, is I just put up on Instagram uh, an image of a paddock 2431, uh, the flame lug uh, paddock. And, and this is like kind of the modern version of this. You yeah, know? well, I'm, I'm, I'm really much inspired about those kind of, of especially the lugs again, right? Yes, yes, um, totally. I love yeah, these lugs. Can, They're awesome. You can see that these, uh, uh, um, these lugs, you, you, don't have the, you don't have the textures in, in, the, in the 3D model, of course. Yeah. Uh, but you can see that they are shaped like uh, like muscles and holding the uh, holding the strap eventually over here um, and and uh, all the parts uh, on the side are are, uh, are skeletonized right uh, so so, that's and that, cool. so of course that's possible with with 3d yeah. printing now, uh, I was looking at the previous image the sketch it looked like it was the movement was facing the front of the watch is that correct so will it be yeah. 
Um, so you'll have all the, the, these beautiful skeletonized bridges um, on top, and then you'll see basically the gear train from the barrel down to the, uh, the balance wheel. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, there's, there's this feature, there's going to be a dial, which, uh, which we call the, the Eclipse. Uh, yeah. And it will change uh, uh, in UV light. So it means that I can, uh, I can show it in... Uh... That's cool. Ah. <laughs> so when you go outdoors, it darkens or...? Exactly, yeah, yeah. You have the, you have the concept of the, of, the, of the sunglasses, right? Nice. And um, uh, the idea is that, that the, um, uh, it, it will play on your wrist um, while, while you don't completely control it. So if, if it's halfway under, underneath your, your cuff, for example, yeah. then only half of the dial will, will be black. Okay. Um, so this is, this, is a, uh, this is a sample piece which has a, a 7001 still inside of there. Right. And this is UV light. So, in the meantime, I will, I will lighten it up and I'll show you the difference. Um, and the thing is that the trick is done with the dial. So the hands will always be visible. Um, so like now you can see the, uh, that it's blackened already. That's cool. This is uh, uh, something really which cool. is, so th this concept is, is totally, uh, uh, well, the concept is finished, but now I need to finish the movement. And that's quite, uh, um, quite a challenge for a small company. Uh, I, I, yeah, I want, I want to develop it as much as possible in-house uh, and I don't have the precision machine so I'll co collaborate with, with, with companies who can, of course. Right. Uh, and uh, fortunately, I found uh, um, uh, two clients who are willing to, uh, to actually step into this process and invest um, and, and the result will be that they will have this watch for them, of course. That's amazing. Um, yeah, so, so that's the way of working, I think, nowadays, again, which, which fits with the idea of having a very close relation with the clients. Right. Okay, let's go through the, uh, I'm going to do a screen share of your different uh, ornaments, and we can kind of just discuss them a little bit. So we were talking about the, the watches start at 3,389 euros, yeah. excluding that. Um, yeah. And I think that, let's see, we can go to the ornament one. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so this is a 316L uh, surgical steel, which yeah. you use uh, in a 3D in 3D printing. It's got kind of a polished surface here. Um, yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, so in this one, you don't have the, the lines that kind of overlap yeah, in the way exactly. you do. Yeah. In the, in the, in the, great, great size, incidentally. 38 mm is great, and also uh, you know well well selected in terms of the uh, the, the Pezza movement because you know just even where the the small seconds is there's a nice sense of balance throughout the, the, the I'm the very glad that you noticed that because that was that was one of the main issues in the in in, uh, in the dial design you see a lot of dials where the where the seconds is is a bit off too much to the six I hate it yeah it, it yeah. really bothers, it bothers me you know and, and <laughs> so yeah you did, a, you did a great job here so let's uh, I'm gonna just gonna flip flip this on the the side here just so we can take a look at the side view yeah and so there we have the uh, Holtham Rich uh, signature that's in every watch. And then there you can see some of the, the beautiful 3D printing. You know, we might as well show the buckle as well. Because, well, there's a nice picture of that watch as well. So I hope it works. I was talking about the buckle earlier, which is also very cool. Everything, <laughs> everything on the exterior of the watch is 3D printed. So the buckle, the... Um, the... The, prong, but like the tang of the buckle. I, I like the fact that it's 3D printed in, in a contrasting... Um, Material as well. All right, let's see. Uh, okay, very cool. Um, and then let's go from there uh, to the silver dial version of that watch, which is also the same price at uh, three thousand three hundred eighty-nine. And I, you know, it's nice also that you know, as an independent watchmaker, since you don't have to have a you know a, um, a boutique in Boulevard Saint Germain or yeah, <laughs> you, have have, you know, some uh, you know brand ambassador that you're able to you know, pass the value along to, uh, to the client. Yeah. So this is what we saw before. Um, what is the material of the dials? Are they brass? No, uh, yeah, it's base. Uh, the base is brass. And then it's, uh, in this case, it's silver plated. Right. Uh, ah, silver plated. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Nice, it's, a, it's, a, it's a frosted finish, right? It's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is, uh, uh, I, I, I call it rather satin because compared to the raw, it's, 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 um, it's less expressive. Less and less aggressively um, uh, finished. Okay, a little bit more uh, elegant. And then I like like basically how you've done this dial because it, it's a very wonderfully sort of warm and kind of whimsical dial and that it almost feels like you took a pencil and drew it, right? Yeah. 
and <laughs> like even the made in Delft is intentionally like it very handwritten looking, which I, I think is cool. Um, and yeah, it, this isn't a nice thing to look at as well. So if you look at the movement here, it's a different configuration of the base uh, of the plate, the bridges and plate and yeah. also a different finish and also a different level of finishing as well. But I guess if someone said to you, hey, I, I would like um, the ornament one with the uh, the silver dial, but I would like to get like the, the beveling that you see in the raw, yeah. that's something you could do, right? Yeah, I, actually, I don't have I don't have clients uh, uh, <laughs> anymore who order the the elaborate version of the movement. So that's also okay. the reason why I want to level it up. <laughs> okay, cool. Then let's look at the um, let's look at the raw because the raw comes in. Oop, now we're at the making of the the watches. That's a section I haven't even gone into yet. <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, lot of things to read. <laughs> I'm going to okay, update. Okay, uh, point, okay, then let's look at the Delft blue. So that's this one. So is this um, what they call stretch lacquer? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is uh, sorry. This is the Delft blue. So it, the Delft blue has a uh, as a steel case still, yeah. uh, and the dial is the same as in the in the in the gold uh, version you just saw. Right. Uh, it's a Japanese lacquer, which is uh, well, yeah, stacked on top of each other, and then each layer is polished. Yeah, have a very deep uh, deep shine. Um, it's beautiful. It, you know, my Max Buser has this. Well, my my LM uh, Perpetual has this. I guess in French they call it lacquer. Yeah. Um, but it's it really looks like ceramic or enamel almost. It's got this incredible kind yeah, of yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, and, and the idea it's uh, it's exactly to uh, to get the feel of um, uh, of ceramics, and uh, because we uh, I'm, I'm based in Delft, and you have Delft pottery, which is very famous uh, internationally. If you might know, I don't know. It's actually yeah. uh, it's 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 pottery they copied 400 years ago from uh, from Chinese uh, uh, porcelain. Yes. Um, and 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 that's also a, a, a main difference because here in Delft we we didn't have the quality to make porcelain, so it's pottery, so it's thicker. Ah, um, okay. Cool. And and I contacted uh, the 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 only remaining uh, factory uh, in Delft if they could make a dial for me uh, or we could do a collaboration. And they we did some tests, but it wasn't possible to get it thin enough. So therefore. Yes. The, the eventual result is uh, is the lacquer dial, which is closest to uh, to its appearance, and nice. I think it's, it's very fine in how the the indices almost uh, seem to float. Yeah, beautiful, beautifully executed. Um, okay, so we are going to go from uh, here to now. We'll go back to the raw. I oh, no, actually let's go to the gold version because I think it's important yeah. that people realize that, you, that you're doing a gold version as well. Uh, let's see, 18 karat. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, well, which one does Ralph have? Ah. How many? He's got a, a couple, I would imagine. I'm having this one, uh, which he, he wanted to show, which is the. But we'll talk about that later. This is an example of a um, of a bespoke uh, bespoke dial. Cool. Um, and so this, uh, this is a gold, this is an 18 karat gold uh, yeah. rose gold. Yeah, it's rose gold. It's five N. Okay, uh, but you can have it in yellow or white. And you've yeah. even done one in platinum as well, correct? Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. This was uh, was was quite an exciting project because I knew that there, there was a company printing in uh, uh, 3D printing in uh, in, in gold, mm -hmm. and they uh, they are based in uh, Birmingham, uh, England. Okay. And, uh, wow. Uh, I I have um, I have de deliberately went to them at Basel 2017, I guess. And uh, I, uh, I sh said to them, well, I know that you're experimenting with watch cases, but, but nothing has appeared on the market yet. And I have a design which is ready, ready for 3D printing. So maybe we could, uh, co could collaborate. And that was the beginning of actually this, this watch. And so it's the, it's the only one on the market uh, which is commercially available. Um, and the nice thing is for, for a lot of, for me as a small brand, this is nice because I, I can make a, 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 a single piece. So the investment is also uh, relatively uh, small, right? And and it makes me flexible. So you can choose the 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 alloy of gold, and you can do the platinum, for example. Beautiful. So I think this is the watch that you're holding. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And and tell me a bit about this dial. Yeah, this dial is uh, made with gold enamel, um, okay. and uh, like like. I was I was telling you about the Art Nouveau kind of shapes, which is very organic often, and um, I like I like to have a certain abstract level in into uh, into my watches, which is actually the, the the reason why I wanted to do that is to show that 
for me, it's not about time, like a time, being a time measuring device, but rather uh, making a watch for me is like making art, I guess. Right. So it's, it's very sculptural. And I, with this watch, I wanted to express that it's about art and it's, about, uh, it, it's not about pure technical specs. Right. So I, I um, emitted all the um, uh, indices mm -hmm. um, and this material has, um, uh, ha has a natural flow. So it's, it's wet when I apply it. And then, um, um, then the pattern is very spontaneous. Um, so that, that's, that's cool. the idea behind this dial. So every, every dial is different. So you're, you're making them in, in house in, uh, in, yeah, in yeah. yeah cool. this was actually the result of a client asking if I could do something more abstract than, uh, than the lacquer dial. Right. Um, and then I had the chance to buy a pet printing machine from Switzerland, which I'm very, very, uh, happy with. Um, and, uh, and that was the beginning of making dials in house actually. That's cool. It's funny, I have a bicycle from this, this uh, guy. Well, he's passed away now, but his name is Dario Pegoretti. Um, and he's the guy that invented uh, TIG welding and bicycles. And people ah. used to like, uh, buy his bicycles and paint them like, like different models because they, yeah. they're sponsored by teams. You know, <laughs> so like Tom Boonen used to ride, a, uh, I think it was like a Specialized, but it was actually a Pegoretti, but he painted it as a Specialized. But there's an option that you can, you can go with, um, uh, called Chevetti, and that means that he'll paint your bicycle it abstractly, but you don't get to choose what it is. <laughs> he'll, just, he'll just do it, you know. Yeah, but, but, I, but I, I think but it's kind of right. cool. Though. That's really nice, right? If you have, if you have, um, if you buy a, a, a painting for a certain painter, you can't tell you can't tell him what he is painting, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, I dig that. Okay, so for what I just want to mention for the uh, the raw ornament, which is. Yeah, it's, it's just got this, you know, even added sense of like sort of, uh, of, of dynamic tension because of these polished surfaces versus the, uh, the raw 3D printed um, um, uh, surface effect. Comes with the 14 karat gold dial with the blue, uh, I guess the kind of vintage loom in the, yeah. uh, the hands. The, the, can, okay, and that's, I guess, to match the, the gold of the dial. And yeah. then you've got this one as well, which is, um, is, that a, is that a rhodium dial that's been like yeah. sandblasted with the yeah. blue loom? which I think is quite cool as well. But actually, they're both really cool. This is kind of nice also because it's got that super monochrome kind of vibe to it. Yeah, that, that was the idea. This is, this, yeah. The idea was that it was, it, well, not on purpose. The background is like concrete, so it looks like it was carved out of concrete. Uh, that was the whole idea. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I like how you mentioned that uh, Corbusier, because I'd forgotten, was, he was the first one to actually make like raw concrete or unfinished yeah. concrete, like aesthetic, like, you know, luxurious. And it's something that's so prevalent today. We take it for granted. Um, I, I, I think I, I, when I was in architectural school, I, I, I really hated the guy because he had these very uh, modernist ideas of which were, uh, uh, he, he had like, uh, there was a kind of ideology behind it, but it was on a very large scale. So he, uh, he tended to forget the human skill, but then um, he made this, this, such beautiful buildings like uh, uh, Le Notre Dame on Haute uh, in Ronchamp, yeah. which is the, the, the very organic shaped church. Yes, and which, which that, has raw concrete floors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, and that, that piece is just like one of the most beautiful buildings ever made, in, in my opinion. So, so the guy is very, uh, uh, and, and, uh, how do you call it, like dualistic, I yes. guess? Yes, but I love that, you know? Um, yeah. he's, he's brutal, but he's also, um, he's, he's, he's sensual. And I think that, you know, that kind of encapsulates the appeal that I find in, in your watches as well. Um, all, buddy, if you, uh, I'm going to say goodbye because I've got to jump into my, my next interview. In yeah, minutes. of course. <laughs> but, uh, it was a real pleasure. And, um, and I really dig what you're doing. I think, at, you know, starting at 3,389 euro, excluding VAT, it's also a tremendous value proposition. Um, but how cool is it that it's, it's a watch where you get to know the person that is, that's making it for you, that designed it, and uh, whose name is on, on it as well. So thank you very much for your time. Thank and, you too. Uh, best of luck, and, and uh, this story and this interview will be up. Um, I'll try. I'll I try to get up in like in the next day or so, but if not, um, by latest the thirtieth, so the last day of this month. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Take Thanks care. So Bye, Ralph. Thank you. Bye, Wayne. Okay.